Well, good morning. How's everybody? I hope you're doing well. Listen, if you don't know me, my name's Elliot. I'm the lead minister here at the Cove. I'm thrilled that you're with us today. Whether you're with us in the room right now or whether you're joining us live on the stream or on the podcast a little bit later, we love you. We're glad that you're here with us. Let me be among the first to wish you happy Resurrection Sunday or happy Easter. We are excited about what God has done in this place already, what he's doing right now, what he's going to do in a little bit. Right now, we're going to take some time and open up the word of God together. So let's pray and we'll get right into it. Father God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the tomb. Thank you for the resurrection. God, right now, as we open up your word, we just ask that your spirit would fill this place, that you would speak to us, help us to be attentive to what you have to say. We ask that you would leave none of us unchanged. We love you so much, Father. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So our family, we love magicians. Y'all like magicians? We're big fans. We're like, we get... We get sometimes we'll watch a whole evening, and that's just what we watch. We just watch magic and all this stuff. It's just really fun. And when I say magicians, I really mean street magicians. You know, like the guys like David Blaine. You know what I'm talking about? They just like walk up on the street. We watched him walk up. He had a chicken in his hand, and he just walks up to these group of kids and rips the head off of it, and then he puts it back on, and everyone's freaking out. And I don't know what's more fun, the trick or the reaction to the trick. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's awesome when he walks up, he'll be like, hey, 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 you, have you ever seen somebody bite a quarter and a half? And then he just bites one in half, and then he spits it back together, and people are like, they're mind blown. They don't know what to do with that. And they're running around and screaming, and it's just funny. We just laugh, and we go, I wonder how I wonder how he does that. But I don't know that we actually want the answer to that question because if we did know how he did it, it might be a little bit disappointing because, you know, there's something fun, you might say magical, about the mystery, yeah? You don't actually want to know the answer. Though I, we understand that none of it's actually had, like I understand the difference between an illusion, right? I, I know what that means. But, but it's fun to suspend belief for a little bit and live in a world where stuff like that really happens, isn't it? We're all drawn to this kind of thing. And we're here today, in, gathered in this place, to celebrate Easter. Now, why do we do that? Why do we do that? Well, for some people, it's a cultural thing. It's just what you do. Like you get the family together, you go to an Easter service, and then you go home and you have a big dinner, you got ham, you got all this kind of stuff, and, and this is just what we do as a family. And if that's you and you're here today, I'm really glad you're here. I'm really glad you're here. Maybe, maybe you're here today because, well, you tell people, I, I'm at church, I go to church, and if you don't go to church on Easter, you're not really sure if you can still say that you go to church. So you're here because you got to check the box and say, I, I still go to church. And if that's you, I'm glad you're here. I'm really glad you're here. But why, why do we celebrate Easter? Why are we here? We're here today to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. That's why we're here. And we've seen some impressive illusions. We've seen some impressive magic over the years. But what we're talking about right now is rising from the dead. Rising from the dead. We're not talking about a trick. We're not talking about an illusion. There's nothing to figure out. What we're here to celebrate today is that Jesus was dead and now he's not. That's what we're here to celebrate. And it leads to a fairly important question do you believe in the resurrection of the dead? Do you believe in the resurrection of the dead? Really? And honestly, do you? Do you really believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Maybe you're like, I don't even know if that question matters. Does it actually matter? Like, what if it was just a metaphor or something like that? Is, it, does that, is that really important? Well, let me answer that question with another question. You ever played Jenga before? You ever played it? We played it yesterday at the egg hunt. We had a big giant version of it and kids were trying to jump out of the way as that giant tower fell on top of them. It was hilarious. But you're talking about Jenga. You build the blocks and then you remove one at a time until the tower collapses. I need to tell you that without the resurrection, Christianity collapses entirely. Without the resurrection, there is no Christianity. There is no reason to be here. Not today, not next week, 
Not ever again. See, the resurrection is what's known in theological circles as a first-tier doctrine. Okay, what does that mean? It means, very simply, if you don't believe in the resurrection, you can call yourself whatever you want, but you're not a Christian. Okay? If the resurrection didn't happen, there is no Christianity. So you can't be a Christian. And there are a lot of things as Christians we can and probably do disagree on, and that's okay. We can do that. We can still love Jesus. We can still love each other. Let me give you an example. How do you interpret the book of Revelation? Is that literal? Is it figurative? Is it like a mix? Like we can get into all kinds of some interesting conversations about it. And those conversations aren't bad. They're kind of fun, actually, if I'm being honest with you, to have sometimes. But they do not impact your salvation if we disagree on how that is interpreted. Do you understand what I'm saying? The resurrection is different, though. The resurrection is different because if the resurrection didn't happen, then Christianity is useless. It doesn't even exist. See, without the resurrection, we got a major problem. And the problem is this. If resurrection's impossible, so is restoration. If resurrection's impossible, so is restoration. And the story of Jesus is a story about how God made a way for us to have our relationship with him, which was broken by sin, be restored. It's the whole thing. And the thing about sin is it can't be cured. It can only be killed. It can't be cured. It can only be killed. That's why Jesus had to die. In his death, he took on the sin of the world. And when he rose, everything changed. Everything changed. Resurrection is the only way to be rid of sin. And maybe you think, now, this guy's overstating the case a little bit. It's Easter. He's all excited. He's just wound up a little bit. He'll calm down in a couple weeks. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Before you write me off, and, and by the way, what Elliot thinks of it really doesn't matter at the end of the day, okay? Because Elliot's been wrong before. He tries not to be. But it really doesn't matter what Elliot thinks because at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is what the Word of God says, Okay? So what I want to do today is just open up the Word of God together and let it speak for itself. So where we're going to start today is Matthew chapter 28. If you have your Bible, you can go ahead and open it up to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew's the first book in the New Testament, the very last chapter of the book of Matthew. 28 is where we're going to be. We're going to begin in verse 1. If you're following along in the YouVersion Bible app, you can hit the live event tab and look for Swiss Cove in there. We'll also have the words on the screen for you. We're going to get, begin in Matthew chapter 28, verse 1, and see what the Bible has to say about the resurrection. Here's what it says. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He's risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. See, the Bible clearly states that Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus himself, himself spoke of his resurrection many times before he even died. His followers would spend the rest of their lives committed to this idea. Matter of fact, they were willing to die rather than renounce the claim that Jesus rose from the dead. So again, we come back to these questions. Do you believe that really happened? And does it matter? Do you believe it really happened and does it even matter? Well, Paul wrote a letter to the Corinthian church and he addressed this very thing. Because you see, 
there have always been people who have doubted the resurrection of the dead. And if we're being honest with ourselves, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because most of the time, when people die, they don't get back up and start doing other stuff. That's not usually how that works. But here, Paul explains, why is this such a line in the sand kind of doctrine like we talked about a minute ago? Why does it matter so much that this happened? And here's what he had to say in 1 Corinthians 15, beginning in verse 12. He writes this, But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he didn't raise him from the dead if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. So what did Paul say? He said, if the dead don't rise, then Jesus didn't rise either. Fair? If the dead don't rise, Jesus didn't rise either. And if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, your sins aren't forgiven. And if your sins aren't forgiven, then your relationship with God hasn't been restored. You follow me? If there is no resurrection, there is no restoration. And the whole thing is useless. And we could, we could spend a lot of time talking about the evidence for the resurrection. There's a lot of really good research out there about this. And if you want to take a deep dive into the evidence of Jesus' resurrection, I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of Lee Strobel's book, The Case for Christ. The Case for Christ. That's Lee Strobel. He does a fantastic job covering all kinds of really big questions. Like, did Jesus die or did he just pass out? I mean, he lost a lot of blood. Maybe he just passed out for a little bit. And then he woke up and that would explain how people saw him before and after the resurrection. He dives deep into that. Was his body really absent from the tomb or are we just pretending the whole time for all these years? Maybe the apostles broke in and they stole it and we just didn't find it. Maybe that's... Maybe Jesus, was, was he actually seen by people alive after the crucifixion? He goes into all these questions and a lot, a lot more, does a great job. Here's the thing. I'm not going to try to argue, in, argue you into believing the resurrection this morning. I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is let you know how high the stakes are if the resurrection didn't happen. And it's everything. The unanimous testimony of the Bible is that Jesus rose from the dead it wasn't a trick. The resurrection really happened, and the resurrection really matters. As it turns out, it's really the only thing that does. Because without it, none of the rest of it does. We can all go home, because the rest of it falls apart. Without the resurrection, you are still in your sins and destined for an eternity in hell. But here's the good news. The resurrection did happen. The resurrection did happen. It's not a story, it's not a trick, it's not a fantasy. The good news of Easter is this, because of the resurrection, you have hope of restoration. What was impossible before has been made possible through Jesus. And this is the part of the story where the preacher tells you it's real easy, just come see me in a minute, right? Well, kind of. Yes and no. This is the part where the preacher tells you that the only way to be rid of sin is to die and to be born again. That's the only way. But what does that mean? And what does that look like? What does that death look like? Well, Romans 6 says this, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into what? 
his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death. Why? Well, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know That our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Now listen, I know this invitation sounds strange, especially on an Easter Sunday. But the invitation is this, you need to come and you need to die. You need to come and die. Why? Well, it's real simple, actually. You know, you can't have a resurrection without a death, right? You can't have a resurrection without a death. And you can't have restoration without a resurrection. What did Romans say? Anyone who has died has been set free from sin. And if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. You want to be free from sin, yeah? You want to be free from sin? It's pretty important, actually. And here's here's the problem. We're really good at sinning. It's probably the thing that we're the best at. We sin every day, and we have every day. And sin is what separates us from God. That's what broke our relationship with him in the first place. And because of the resurrection, you can be set free of the sin in your life. The resurrection of Jesus is everything. Without it, you are hopelessly lost. And without it, you will remain so for all eternity. But because, because of the resurrection, now you can have a restoration. And it's available to you today, right now, in this moment. And if you have questions about that or about anything that I've said, come and see me in a little bit. I'd love to chat with you about it. I'll be right down here in just a few minutes. Don't leave. Just come talk to me. If you don't want to come down front or you don't want to talk to me, find somebody else that's got a name tag on before you leave today and chat with them about it. If they've got a name tag on, what that means is they are a staff member here at Swiss Cove or they are one of the elders of this church and we would love to chat with you about what we're talking about right now, about how you can have your relationship with God restored the way that it was meant to be. Listen to me, don't put it off. I promise Easter dinner will keep. I promise it will. Okay, this is everything. It's everything. Maybe you're already a Christian. Maybe you've already experienced this. And you know, it's wild. Sometimes, sometimes, after you've been a Christian for a minute, you forget that you had to die to become one, don't you? Sometimes, after you've been a Christian for a minute, you forget that you had to die to become one. And so you start creeping back into the same habits that you used to, engaged in before you were a Christian. And I just, I just want to remind you, Christian, today of what it says in 2 Corinthians 5. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The old is gone. The new is here. See, you're not the same person that you were before because you've been resurrected. You've been made new. You died to get rid of that sin. So how come you keep going back to it over and over again? Church, listen, we're not going to live that way anymore. We're not going to go back to that old way of life. What we're going to do right now together is repent publicly of that. And say, listen, we're not going back to that old life. We died to that life. We're going to remember that Jesus gave his life and was resurrected so that we could die and be raised to a new life in Christ. We're not going back to that old way of life no more because we're going to remember what it says in Colossians 3 when it says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. 
Praise God for the resurrection. Amen? Amen. Praise God for the resurrection. Because Jesus was raised, I've been restored. Because Jesus was raised, you've been restored. It's because of the resurrection that restoration is possible. And that, church, that's why we celebrate Easter. That's why we celebrate on Resurrection Sunday. So let's give God all the praise. And he deserves all that we've got and then some, doesn't he? He deserves all the praise. So let's stand together. And we're going to pray and we're going to praise him some more. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the opportunity to be in this place together and celebrate what you've done, what you're doing, what you're going to do. We're so thankful for the cross. And we're so thankful for the empty tomb. Thank you for the resurrection of Jesus and the hope that it gives to each and every one of us. May we never take it for granted, not one more second. We love you so much. May you receive all the glory and all the praise for everything that happens both here in this moment and as we leave this place in a little while. We love you, Father. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.